Hey guys, we've got another interview for you right now with two of the stars from the great Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing well. Um, first off, the, the show is something else and you are both phenomenal in it, but we're going to talk about a little bit of everything right now. And I wanted to go back to the very beginning because you are two people who have had great experience in the industry at a very young age. So would you say that there was a first collaborator that made the biggest impression on you that you find yourself still thinking about that collaboration today? I mean, I don't know if it's something that um, I, one of my first experiences making a, f a film was with Hugh Grant on on About a Boy. And that's certainly something that I don't I don't think I purposefully do. But occasionally people will say that there's things that I do, particularly within Tony's writing, um, Tony McNamara, who wrote The Favourite and The Great. There's occasionally moments that people think that I've kind of taken things that Hugh does and stolen them and run with them maybe a little bit. And I don't purposely do that, but I take it as a compliment when people do say that I've taken some of his You um, should take that as a compliment. We, all, yeah. we kind of all grow and evolve from our experiences, so you're supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Al? Yeah, um, for me, what sticks out, I did a movie um, with Sally Potter called Ginger and Rosa. She directed me in it, and just that whole experience, I was, um, I had just turned 13, like the teenage, you know, newly a teenager, and something about that character, I felt so unlike myself, and I learned so much from Sally on that, and just as a, on a personal level, and I had my first kiss ever, in that movie and she used um and i tried to act cool and say like yeah like i've like kissed a lot of people before um but she uh used like the first kiss uh that take and like years later she's like i used the you know the one i knew that you never had and so that's on camera for everyone to see forever but i think yeah Wait, you were I, 13 grew. and you were like oh i've kissed a lot of people yeah i was trying to act cool i was trying to be like yeah, no big deal. Like, yeah. Do that she knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, kind of speaking of that, because I've asked this question to a bunch of people and, and some have said the first kiss type thing. But what's what's the question that you wished you had had the nerve to ask earlier on that you felt silly asking as far as, you know, how things work on a film set go? I think I'm still asking silly questions most days on how things work or, or like, I don't know, it takes a long time to understand a film set. And that's something that, mm -hmm. that I'm starting to get a better grip of, like understanding all the things that play that end up then on screen at the end and, and how that process comes about. But I think that the editing process is something that obviously normally as an actor, you kind of finish your part of the job and then, and then you kind of see a, a version of what you shot six months a year later and you're kind of like oh wow okay that's interesting so that's that's a, a part of the um process i'm getting more interested in trying to understand better now so i can kind of grasp what goes on in that in that arena and then how that affects what i'm doing on set yeah i was gonna say that <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah interested in getting behind the lens your yourself and giving that a go um, yeah, I mean, I would love to, I got to be a producer on this, um, which was very new territory. Um, but something I've always, I'm so interested in everyone's part on a film set and how it all comes to be. And so getting to be like kind of a part of the process of the beginning stages of it, of like going to pitches and like, go you know to dreaming sort of like being in those rooms and hearing how people speak about projects um when i'm normally always just on the creative side but to get a little bit more on the business side it's because at the same time it you know it is a business too so it's like it, it, it is art but there's another side to it as well which in those rooms i got to see um a bit more of which i am kind of i am fascinated by 
It's exciting to hear that you're getting into producing because I feel like that's that's such a big deal when you have a voice and you want to tell particular types of stories that might not get made unless, you know, you put your weight behind it. So if we get more things like The Great because of that work that you're getting into, <laughs> we're better off for it. Gosh. Are there, are there any particular goals you have as a producer, like a certain type of film, a certain type of voice that you want to help get out there more than what we have now? Yeah, I think, I think for me, I just um, kind of growing up from a young age in the business, I, I've started to learn, I think there's a lot of great examples before me that I do have of like, you know, Reese Witherspoon, for example, it's like she, you know, it's wild, right? Like that was something that she kind of made herself. It was like, she wanted to play a certain type of character that she didn't see out there. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to try to make this happen. And so I'm always, I'm keeping my eyes and, and ears a little bit more open of when I read books or just like an article that I love or find fascinating. I think for me, um, just, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, of course you, I female driven stories always interest me because I'm a female, but, but then at the same time, I just love good stories too. So um, I'm not trying to put myself in a box in that way, really. For sure. I feel like neither of you have put yourself in the, in a box with the great (laughs) range of work you've delivered. So it it does make me wonder back in the day when you guys were first starting out, did you ever kind of label yourselves or your goals in a way? Like I want to be an action star. I want to be a superhero, anything like that. And then find yourself in a place where you're saying, I I can't believe I'm here doing this kind of role right now. There was never an aim like, oh, oh, I want to be an action star clearly (laughs) or any of those sorts of things because I don't know it's quite unpredictable this this line of work anyway you're never sure what script might end up in your pile to read next so it's kind of uh, there's always been a conscious effort on my part to not try and take the easy route and to try and play varied characters and different styles of of um genres I guess of movies and shows and 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 characters but there's never yeah there's never been like a oh this is what I want to do and I want to put myself in that lane because I think the fun of acting is being able to kind of keep a variety of it and and I think I'd get bored if I was doing the same kind of thing over and over again so that's what um I love and that's why this was such a fun thing to take on because it was like I haven't done tv for a while Tony's writing such a singular voice this character is something that um I don't feel like I've played but it's like a lot of fun because there's not a lot of barriers within playing him. Um, so it's just kind of those, those options, I guess, of keeping things fresh and, and new and, and that stops me from getting bored and hopefully stops people from getting bored of watching me. The last time we spoke, I think it was for, for killing your friends. You do oh, have yeah. a knack for, for playing a jerk, like a quick <laughs> jerk. I mean, I Thank mean you. it's a wholehearted compliment because right I find it so endlessly entertaining. <laughs> They are very entertaining characters to play, and particularly with Peter because he's so funny. He's just odd. He he has no sense or understanding of other people's feelings or emotions, really, and what he says and how it affects them. So he comes out with bizarre things um, that are outrageous and horrible and hurtful, but also at times kind of honest and funny from his perspective. Um, I mean, they're kind of funny from the viewer perspective, too, even though I know he's terrible to everybody <laughs> around him. Uh, Elle, what about for you? Did you uh, did you set any personal goals for yourself early on that you uh, you exceeded in a way you didn't expect? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> You've done everything. No, 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 I haven't. Like, that's what's funny. Okay. Like, I feel right. like I have not done everything. Um that I'd want to or want to try. I think like I very similarly, like again, stealing all of Nick's answers, but I just like, I love a challenge and love to be able to morph myself into someone that I feel like I'm, I'm completely not like from forever for me, like acting of course is fun and is a job. And, but you know, starting young, it was like dress up in this form of make believe and keeping that kind of childlike imagination alive and like that's truly what it still is for me um and I feel like I really thrive in situations when I'm terrified or like under pressure and I'm like up against myself that I have to it's like it's like I make it a do or die situation like and I love that feeling I feel like I love teetering on the tightrope and I definitely felt like 
many days like that when I was playing Catherine in the great. Um, I don't know if it was just, I felt like I was very much out of my comfort zone, but then that's a comfortable place for me to be. And I got to explore more sides to myself and um, got to, I don't know, knock some walls down that I probably had up. Um, maybe that's just the comedy of it all too, that to explore that a bit more. Um, Cause I haven't truly done comedy maybe on this, on this level of when you're like have to deliver a joke and you want, you actually want the audience to laugh, you know, <laughs> like that I hadn't really had. So um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was different. I always try to just do very different roles. Try to. <laughs> as far as getting people to laugh, great success with, with this one. I'm only halfway through. I was too afraid to binge them all and then run the risk of spoiling the show for everybody. But <laughs> I mean, I, like to be completely honest, I sometimes judge a period piece by its poster or whatever you want to say. And I just assume I'm not going to like it. And this, this proved me wrong big time. Um, before it's, we yeah, it's in a different category of period piece. <laughs> it really sure. is. One, one weird thing that gets in my head. So, Nick, am I crazy that I think every single uh, palace setting is the same place as the favorite? Um, not, no, uh, you're not insane. You can, when, we were, when we were shooting the pilot for this, um, we shot at Hatfield House which is uh, one of the places we shot a fair amount of the flavor uh, at as well. So, so you're actually very per perceptive. Well, okay. I feel like not now- Not insane. I Isn't that a relief? Apparently now I can always spot that location, the house from the movie Insidious, or the house from Billy Madison. Oh, well, wow. Yeah, that's the impressive. impressive. It's cool in the back. I that, feel how, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if I lose everything else, at least I have that skill set. <laughs> uh, before we get into the great here, I also wanted to ask you both about jumping into major film franchises because I really can't even imagine the pressure of jumping into something like X-Men or like Maleficent. So when you're going into something that big, especially for the very first time, is it a no brainer to want to take this potentially game changing opportunity? Or are you sitting there and kind of weighing the value of the pressure of being associated with a really popular brand? You, I think try and always weigh up each each job and character and what, and what you're going into with the same kind of assessment, I suppose, going in and what the character is, who, who's directing or who's producing, who's making the film and, and what the story is and what the character is, if it's something that you can um, feel you can bring something to and, and have, a, have an angle on. But then also, yeah, there's definitely, I suppose, from my standpoint, if there's if it is a big franchise like that, I mean, it's different because I, you know, with X-Men, I'm playing a supporting role. Um, and then that's actually a lot of weight lifted from you going into those things because it's not riding on your back. You're getting to be a part of something that's a lot bigger than you. Um, and that's where it's actually very freeing. Um, so I really thrive and enjoy that, that idea, but yeah, definitely in, in the past and when you get offered kind of those bigger tentpole movies that maybe it is, relying more on you as a, as a lead character. That is something that you have to kind of look at in a different way, because like I was saying earlier, it's, it is a business. So people kind of do judge you on how those films perform more so than if you go and do an indie film that doesn't work out and mm -hmm. people don't particularly see. So it is, it is a different assessment, I suppose, from, from your angle, always got to look at it from a creative standpoint first, but um, there are, there are different kind of things at play, I suppose, with that. Yeah. Has the X-Men experience kind of changed your opinion on signing on for future franchises? Because I know this was completely out of your control, but you had, you made such a big, even though it is an ensemble series, you made such an, a big impression on that franchise. And what happened to it was entirely out of your control. So does that kind of put a bug in your head when the next thing comes knocking on your door for like a multi-film deal where, you know, you got to commit no matter what the industry and the future for the industry holds? It's tricky though. So the, any multi-length sort of deal is, is interesting to sign on to because it can shape your future quite a lot. And also it's an odd thing because yeah, as you say, you don't always have complete control over it. The only thing that you can rely on is that hopefully if something's good and people like it, then it keeps going. And that means that you'll obviously want to keep being involved with it. Um, and with the X-Men experience, I had like 
I've made so many brilliant friends and had such a great time making them and, and, and love all the people involved. So, so it certainly is not something I mean, yeah, if those sorts of things came about again, where it's a multi deal, whatever, um, it's not something that I'd be intimidated by under the right circumstances. So pivoting to the type of commitment that a series requires, I mean, what is it like committing to a show like The Great versus a feature film? And it's especially with the uh, the variation in the shooting schedule, do you have to give a series any more thought to actually, you know, have that chunk of your schedule taken up by that? Yes. I mean, I, the, I think that it just means that... Um, like I would like the series has to be something that I truly believe in and that I fully want to give all of my time to, um, because it does take, I mean, it took six months, um, for us, but then again, I mean, some of the really big, big movies do take that long. I mean, I guess Maleficent kind of, it did take six months. Um, but, um, that's kind of the only film that I've done that was of that scale. So um, six months for me in a film, like in a film world is really, really a lot. Like we did the beguiled in like 20 days. Like I'm used to like 20 day shoots. So it's not like, so I'm like, whoa, six months of my life, half my year. Um, and what, you know, also you do think, well, what other opportunities am I going to miss out on? Like it has to all be, it has to be worth it. You know, you have to believe in it. Um, and with this show, it was really not, there was no debate. Like for me, it was the first, when I read the script and um, was included, it was, there was no thought. I didn't, I didn't think it was a gut reaction and like, I had to do it. Like I had to. So um, I think that that's, that's a gift. Like when you have that feeling, you know, and it, and it's all worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, Between the, between the two of you, who signed on to this first? Elle signed on. Elle, Elle, you put it together. Yeah, but I, but yeah, but I also guess, I mean, I, but I feel like when I first heard about it too, like Tony was working with you or the, fa- like Tony knew you from the favorite and we, was we, like, yeah, we'd he, done that. And yeah. And Tom, yeah, he, he's like, he's Peter. Like that was it. So I always knew that that was, that you were going to be him. <laughs> he, Tony always said that. So you guys finally come together on this. And I know with a lot of indie films, especially, you don't really have all that much rehearsal time, but it almost feels like like the beating heart of this show is your cadence together and the tone established. So do you guys get the appropriate amount of time to, you know, play around and kind of find that together before you jump on set? There wasn't a no. whole lot of things. <laughs> I knew you were going to say no, and I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but I think we both we both work in a very similar manner and both kind of come with the same level of preparedness to each day to filming and, and kind of sometimes not so prepared <laughs> sometimes not so prepared because we have a lot of dialogue to learn and not always a lot of time to learn it and the pace that you move at is very fast on tv but also we uh, else you said this before where we kind of enjoy kind of the tit for tat and, and battling each other within a scene and that's why our characters do a lot within this and Tony writes such fun scenes for that to happen with him um but it's it's just enjoyable and then we get to play around and have fun so there's always enough time on set to get what we need um but there's not always as much rehearsal but then also when you've been playing with these characters for a long time like like we do by the end of this you kind of um have an understanding of what what the scene is or what the what you're going to be bringing to it and then it's just about finding that balance and and what what the story is I'm yeah. just curious because you guys seem to be so in sync. What what happens when you have a co-star where maybe you're not as in sync or your process is extremely different? Do you guys kind of have, you know, <laughs> tools in the toolbox in order to adjust to that? <laughs> I think that um I mean, so that you're gonna like Nick is like uh, like the best sparring partner, like you were saying, like, there's just like, there's something like that with us, we completely click, you know? And we, I think it's also because we work the same way. And then inevitably you are, and I've experienced this where you sometimes work with people that, oh, like they do things um, very differently. Not that it's wrong, you know, that's there. Everyone has their own thing that they do. And I respect all that. Um, But I don't know sometimes, and, and, but it is, it is harder. Like with Nick, it's like, I don't know. It makes it much easier, you know, and more fun. Um, 
it makes it also just like enjoyable on that, uh, which, you know, matters in life, <laughs> I think as well. Also working yeah. with someone who operates differently than you, maybe you pick yeah. up some of their techniques. So I don't know, over the course, yeah, of course, of you years, learn from, you learn from, um, from everyone on set of how, you know, what they're, what they do. And I can't think of like something, oh, so specific or like how you deal with it. I mean, I don't know. I've always been, I didn't go to acting school, you know, or anything. I grew up on set. And so I feel like my lessons and everything I learned was from other people who were very different from me and, and directors that work a different way. And I don't, I also feel like I'm not necessarily someone that has this method or that I need rehearsal or that I need this. It's like, I kind of like to experiment and like, all right, this director wants us to all dance like crazy together. All right. Not necessarily I would do, but I'll try it out. And it's all a part of that one experience, you know, that movie, that experience, it makes that character unique in a different way. Cause it was a totally different process. So I try to embrace like each process, each person's process, if that makes sense. <laughs> I try to embrace it fully and just go for that. And then my own homework and like what I do at home is my own separate thing that I probably, I can't really explain, but that's my grounding. And then I'm prepared enough to be spontaneous and try the weird idea or, you know, that, that you would never think of. And it, it kind of that collaboration makes for something very different, you know? Uh, yeah. And that, that, that was, in, you know, interesting on this is that in TV, you have different directors and that was like, whoa, like that was new for me. I've never done TV. And so getting used to how each director works, but then they're also fitting into a, 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 a list of rules that we have for our show and trying to follow our rules. And then we feel like we know our characters the best, you know, so they're coming in and, um, and you're, you're wanting to get their ideas and they're adding a new flavor. So it, that, was, that, that was something that took adjusting for me, I think. to I would get used to a director and be like, oh, you know, we're, we're getting on. And then, boom, oh, they're gone. Like someone's coming in tomorrow. So and just the pace of that. Um, but I think it added something for it adds for something very refreshing because each episode also has a different you know point of view and, and stuff. Absolutely. Your ensemble is phenomenal so of everybody i want to name drop them all right now but if you had to pick one member of the ensemble who when you read their role on the page what they wound up doing with it was something completely different that you didn't even expect who would you pick and why i know who you're gonna say nick who am i gonna say you're gonna say doug yeah i am gonna say yeah. Doug. i loved watching i loved watching doug douglas hodge who played elemental um, I thought he took, yeah, he took a character that on the page was, was great and well-written and, but then he, he brought so much to it and just made me giggle in every single scene, his physicality, all the mannerisms of the character. And then also watching that character evolve through the series as well. And, um, I, I think he's brilliant. And each time I was in a scene with him, it would make, it would make me laugh and I'd look forward to it. So, yeah. I really love Sasha, it, how he plays Orlo. Orlo is just like, oh, I feel like he's the heart of the show. Like I just love him. I love him Again, so I'm much, and that's all Sasha. But he's he really is something else. <laughs> yes, and it's just like his neuroses and all the little details that Sasha brings to it. It's really incredible. All right, to dip into a little future stuff before I let you guys go, L. One of your things that I am so so excited for is the Nightingale because. Mm -hmm. I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the first time you're leading a movie with your sister. And I love Mel Melanie Laurent too. So what was it about that particular script that made you to say, now is the time we are going to lead a movie together? Yeah, I think there, you know, there have been scripts in the past, um, even when we were much younger, which I'm glad we didn't do. I think now that we're, we've grown, <laughs> um, even, you know, in our relationship and where we, where we are now, um, this is just the perfect timing to finally work together and kind of bring each other into that artistic world. Like, cause we're not, we don't talk about work with each other. So, and we've actually heard from people that we work very differently, um, on set. So like, be curious to find out <laughs> how it is. Um, but it's just, it's such a special, um, 
a special project and story and um it's truly also about sisters and that's something that i think you know we deliberated about too we're like should we want to play sisters maybe we could just like you know be something else entirely but like we are sisters and that dynamic. I think we can really bring that to the screen. You know, we, we know that dynamic. <laughs> Hell, have you seen any of the fan casting for you as Batgirl? Because I also know uh, Nick Reffin has spoken about directing a Batgirl movie or at least expressed interest. What is so funny about this? We're, Cause well, Nick and I, Nick from the very start, like, I don't know why, I don't know why he does this, but from the moment, like I met him when I was 16, he, my nickname is Batgirl to him. So he'll always, um, and he's a uh, Robin, Robin Wonder Boy. So he'll say like, "Hey, bad girl!" Like it's Robin Wonder, like always. So like when we we were like just joking, like, "Oh my God!" Like, are they making this? Like, for, because he's always called me that. I feel so. like that's a sign. <laughs> it's meant to be. Yeah, it's meant to be. Yeah, I think Nick. I don't know if they would. He'll he'll do an out there version. I don't know if, it, if it's super commercial. <laughs> it would most certainly be unique. Uh, whatever you guys do, sign on for next after this. I mean, I'm I'm just rooting for you all day long. The more stuff you guys make, the better. But in the meantime, we've got the great hit in Hulu May fifteenth. All ten episodes will be available. I cannot recommend them enough. Go watch them again, guys. Thank you so much for your time today. It's thank greatly you. appreciated. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks it. so much.